Hi everyone, welcome to part 3 of the BMW M5 engine build and today I have some surprises for you. Yes, the engine is being assembled, yes, it's being supported by a piece of wood, yes, I lost my voice and I'm just getting back after a little period without talking to the cameras. And that's one of the reasons why the engine is already back in one piece. But the first surprise that I have is, number one, we're going to be using some used parts to put this engine together or we have already used some parts. And number two, the next couple of videos are not going to be as in detail as the first three videos that I put out. And that's because the owner of the car called me last week and he wasn't very happy with the fact that we're taking so long to put the engine back together. What he failed to realize is that we're only taking so long because he doesn't have money to buy the parts. And once I presented the truth to him, he wasn't very happy about it, but at the end of the day, I do no magic, all right? I'm an engine builder, I put parts together. Without the parts, I have nothing to put together. And he came up with a brilliant idea of reusing the old parts, which I'm very, very against of. But with that said, he doesn't have any money, he wants his car back together. I had to write an email, sent to him, outlining all the risks that he's taking. He was happy to do that. He said, I don't care, just put the engine back together, I want my car back. So that's what we are doing now. And that's the reason why we're not gonna be able to cover the next steps in as many details as we've done so far. In today's video, in part three, I'm gonna detail some of the things that we've done, such as uh, putting the timing chain, putting the front cover, putting the heads in, installing everything that we can see in the engine so far and that's gonna give you a rough idea of what's being involved. We have another engine over there on the corner of the shop, which is from an F90 M5. We're going to do a full rebuild on that engine in probably two or three months. So let's pick that from there and do a more detailed part three of the M5 engine build on that engine. But for the time being, we just have to get along with whatever we have and without further ado, let's get into it. Now the first thing to do is to remove the old sprockets in order to be able to fit the new one. Tightening chain on this S63 and N63 engines stretch like there's no tomorrow, so it's vital to put a new set of chains in when you're doing the reviews. Now moving on to the timing chain cover, we're gonna make it nice and clean and install a brand new seal onto it and then put the protector. Now installing the lower cover for the timing chain and torque them to 10 Nm. Putting the timing chain on is a pretty straightforward process, you just have to make them hang around the sprockets and put the guides in place. Now one thing you're gonna be very careful is that they are actually different, so cylinder 1 to 4 has a different timing chain and tension compared to cylinder 5 to 8, so make sure you put them in the correct place. In order to install this cover with the gasket properly, you have to insert all the screws and then correctly line them up with the block. Once they're in, you can manually thread the bolts in, or in this case using a power wrench, and then you're gonna go back and torque everything up to spec. In this case, they, they require 24 Nm of torque. Moving down to the oil pan, we have one last chance to clean all the surface before we put the two parts together. BMW manuals actually call to apply some silicone on the joints between the front timing cover and the block and also at the rear main seal. This is a must even though the original gaskets have some silicone applied to it. Now we carefully align the upper sump and let's get the bolts. There are 27 bolts that have to be torqued to 27 Nm on a special order. Marking them with a pen as you torque them down is a very good idea because in this case it's very easy to get lost. Now we're going to install the oil thermostats. This little guy is what controls the flow of oil to the front oil cooler in your car. When the engine is cold, this thing shuts that passage of oil to the hose, meaning there's no oil going to the cooler, and once the engine gets to the operating temperature, this valve opens up sending oil to the cooler. Now, any debris here could jam this valve and cause catastrophic damage to your engine. That looks very good to me. Now the oil pump goes in. And the bolts get torqued to 24 Nm. meters.
Now the chain tensioner goes in and the bolt is torqued to, well, 10 Nm. We put the clean oil pickup tube and remember these guys what killed this engine last time so we make sure it's nice, tight and clean. And that part is done. Clean, 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 the new gasket goes on and here comes the sump. Now we get all the bolts up and they're ready to be torqued. And all bolts get torqued up to 10 Nm. Here goes the oil level sensor and its nuts get torqued up to 8.5 Nm. And now to the engine heads. The first step is to apply some silicone where the timing cover meets the block. Just like we've done with the oil sump. The head gasket goes in. And here comes the engine head. Now we popped all the bolts in and they're ready to get torqued. Now the head bolts are torqued to 30 Nm meters and then they require some angle of rotation. And just like with the other parts, the bolts get torqued from the inside to the outside. So once I torque them to 30 Nm, I'm gonna come back and do 90 degrees of rotation. And then I have to go back and do another 140 degrees of rotation on all of them. Now is the time we're going to start to actually build the engine heads. Now first we're going to lube up all bolts and start installing the lifters. Now these guys have to be inserted on the exact same space that they were removed from. If you mix and match them you can end up with a noisy engine. Now the intake camshaft goes in. And it gets torqued down to 10 Nm. Now there are two ways you can actually install the intermediate levers. You can first install the spring, then you install the levers and then you release the tension onto the spring. Or you can also put the levers first and once the levers are in place you come with the spring, install the back plates and then you release the tension. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the three first ones on this way. I'm going to put the spring first. And on the very last one, because there is the sprocket for the intermediate lever, I'm gonna do the other way around, so you guys can see. Now we're installing the seal, 
and then we put in the motor. Now the valve tronic is a variable valve timing that BMW makes that controls how much lift the valve has. And here I'm spinning the motor with a wrench, making sure that I can freely and easily turn the intermediate shaft up and down. The exhaust camshaft is much easier to install because it doesn't have the variable valve lifting. The valve timing is controlled by the Venus brockage, which changes the timing that the valves are opening and closing, but the amount of lifting the valves have is totally related to the camshafts. So once we put the camshaft in, we're going to put all the caps and torque them up to 10 newton meters. Now let's get the camshafts properly aligned and ready for the timing tool to come in. We're gonna carefully clean the mounting surface on the cams and also the Venus sprockets. We install the Venus sprockets onto the engine and we're ready to set timing. Timing the engine is nothing but synchronizing all the cams to the crankshaft. When your pistons are going up and down, they don't go up at the same time as the valve is being pressed down and, and, and hit each other. They have to do exactly on the perfect timing. Now, with that said, I'm not going to make this into a timing video. I just want to give you guys a general idea of how it is. And I promise I'm going to make a dedicated video in the very near future. That's 30. That's 30 Newton meters. Ninety degrees to this guy. And ninety degrees for this guy. And is that easy? We repeat the same process to bank number two and the engine timing is set. Beautiful. The Venus solenoids go in, and also the tensioner covers. Unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to record a video installing the valve cover and a few injectors. Life got on its way, and next thing I knew, the engine was back in one piece. Alright guys, so I think that's it for the part 3 of this video. Unfortunately, I didn't have a chance to record everything. At the end of the day, that's not much of a deal. It's just a bunch of bolts and they get torqued to 10 Nm. We replace the gasket ring around it. Uh, it's a rubber gasket. Put them in place, tie them up properly. Not much drama to it. And same thing for the injectors. We had to replace the seals on the injectors, the decoupling elements and just slide them in place. Talk the bracket to support them in place and uh, that's about it. So I hope this video was helpful. So as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.